Hi there. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled, What are HTTP Cookies? My name is Tim Warner. Here we're concerned not with your favorite cookie, as in chocolate chip or macadamia nut, but instead how your web browser interacts with websites to provide personalization. For instance, how many of you have an account with Amazon.com? You log in and you can instantly see right there on each Amazon page dynamically generated content that's personalized for you. Cookies are responsible for both of those aspects, personalization and persistence, and therefore cookies, at least of the first party variety, are in my opinion, generally speaking, a good thing. An HTTP cookie, a web cookie, a browser cookie, they are all synonymous terms. These refer to small text files that are placed in your web browser's cache and retrieved by the website or web server that set it there. Now, your browser cache can be a full desktop computer, a session of Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer. It could be a tablet browser or it could even be the browser on your smartphone. They all operate the same basic way. Some cookie facts. I want to break some of the myths that exist regarding cookies. They're used to provide for site personalization and, and persistence. Contrary to popular belief, cookies are not executable. They're not script files. They can be partially or fully encrypted, which hides the plain text contents of the cookies, but they can't actually do anything on your system of their own accord. The files are very tiny, so don't worry about cookies occupying too much space, disk space, on your device or computer. And cookies also have a lifetime set by their parent website. Yes, there are plenty of cool cookie cleaner programs around. I'm a big fan of Piriform CCleaner myself. And also, any current web browser will allow you to dump cookies directly from their settings menus. Now, do cookies have any bad sides to them? Yes, the big problem is that of privacy. For instance, third-party cookies are generally speaking not a good thing. They're also referred to as tracking cookies because this deals with cookies that are placed on your computer by a domain other than the one you're visiting. So you could visit a.com, let's say, and they have a banner ad on their page that belongs to b.com. That is a third-party cookie going on your system. Why is that a bad thing? Well, of course, you didn't give explicit permission to b.com to set a cookie. What's even worse is you can go to another domain that b.com has placed an advertisement on. And because it's the same domain, it's reading and writing from the same cookie. That means b.com can actually generate your browsing history from site to site. The other aspect of privacy with cookies deals with just someone else using your computer and that can be embarrassing because they can see which sites you've been to. Not saying you would go to any that would cause embarrassment, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Finally, we have a problem in the computing world nowadays called cross-site scripting. And this is a technology that forces script to run from a web page down on your computer. And in so doing, a malicious individual or organization possibly could snag your cookie that's being used legitimately by another domain and spoof your identity and therefore compromise your privacy. That's not a good thing. Let's finish this micro nugget with a brief demo and I'll show you how to take control of cookies on your web browser. Because I'm a great fan of Google Chrome, I'm taking the demo here from the perspective of Chrome. However, any contemporary web browser, whether it's Opera or Microsoft Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox, all have the same basic controls. If you navigate into Chrome settings, which you can do by typing the URL Chrome settings or coming down to settings here through the menu, we can reveal our privacy stuff. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's kind of hidden away. I don't like that. If we come down to the bottom and show advanced settings, this exposes our privacy controls. We can click content settings to see what's going on with cookies. Local data refers to first party cookies. You can block all cookies or just block third party cookies, which you see I've done. Exceptions mean we can put in domains that we want to always allow or block or just allow during our session and purge after we're finished browsing. All cookies and site data will show you the cookie cache on your system. You can dump them all with one click and you can see here that depending on the domain you might have no cookies, one cookies. YouTube gave me 11 cookies and you can dig into each one directly in Chrome as you see here. And this one has some plain text information as well as some encrypted data. None of this is necessarily personally identifiable but like I said if someone's using your computer and happens to come in here they can see your browsing habits by viewing the cookies that are stored on your system. 
Finally, I want you to know that many add-ons, browser extensions exist that give you control over cookies. I'm using one in Chrome called Edit This Cookie. This might be overkill for some people. Let me go to a site, usatoday.com, that involves personalization in the form of its weather. So it detects that I'm in Eugene, Oregon, and gives me the current weather in that city. Again, that's a perfect example of personalization visiting a website. Now, if I click my add-on here, it shows me details about every single cookie it's given. It looks like there's three. We can delete them all. You can flag them, export the cookies. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff here with this particular extension. But the reason I chose to show you this is to show you how easy it is to edit the cookie data. For instance, that weather location is actually populated dynamically right in here in plain text. Now it's escaping a space and a comma, Eugene, comma, Oregon, but I can easily swap that in for another city and another state like this. I'll submit the cookie changes, then I will reload the browser, and sure enough, now as far as the web browser is concerned, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. So there you have it, friends. I hope that I've been able to bust some myths that you might have believed about cookies, and I hope I've given you the tools with which you can fully take control of your privacy and cookie behavior on your systems. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.